Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, bettingangle.us. Let's talk Manny Pacquiao versus Adrian Broner, uh, betting strategy on this fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me say, they have sold this fight well. Right? You have a bunch of people out there who have been trying to convince the public that this fight is a 50-50 fight. Right? As subscribers here online know, I don't view it as a 50-50 fight. I view this fight as a mismatch. I've already made a video on this fight. Right? I don't get it. Adrian Broner is a young man, had a lot of talent. There's no question about that. But I'll say this. His weight yo-yoed. Right? He himself seemed to be uncertain on the style of fight he wanted to fight. So he had a big fight against Mikey Garcia at 140 pounds, and he's on his back foot. Right? Running. Not engaging. I believe he himself questioned his chin. Now there is no way, there, there is just simply no way that you could be running that much, that much against Mikey Garcia at 140 pounds and think that you can take Manny Pacquiao's punch at 147 pounds. Right? Pacquiao hits hard, folks. It's hard. 147 is a heavier weight class by 7 pounds than 140. Right? 7 pounds. Let me also say, too, that Pacquiao is what I call a freak athlete who has kept himself in peak condition. You know the personality type, right? When Manny's not in the ring, he's on the basketball court, right? This is a Jim Thorpe type guy, right? He's the guy who I'm sure at the family picnic is out there throwing a football around, right? Impossible to tackle as a running back. Great athletes like this who still have their reflexes at 40 are going to be qualitatively faster than a guy who's doing a Ricky Hatton impersonation, right? Had talent, was ballooning in weight, is changing weight classes, loses his reflex early. I don't believe, despite all the bluster, despite all the talk, I don't believe that Adrian Broner believes he can take Manny Pacquiao's punch at 147 pounds. Right? Pacquiao is sudden. He hits hard. Right? The opponents who have given Manny problems have had issues. Juan Manuel Marquez, first round of their first fight, how did that work out for him? You saw... Antonio Margarito, bravely, hanging in with Manny Pacquiao, right? His eye was never the same. Folks, his career was never the same after that fight. Miguel Cotto hits the canvas several times against Manny. Now, I understand many people are going to say, yeah, but that was Manny from several years ago. Well, the Broner you're remembering... Isn't that the Broner of several years ago? Folks, it's been several years since Marcus Maidana, who's been retired for a while now, beat Adrian Broner. But the people who believe in Broner are believing in a Broner that hasn't existed for several years. Right? Several years. So, the biggest mismatch, and it'll be apparent, folks, in the first round. I'm not even, you don't even have to watch this fight for 
five or six rounds to figure out the lay of the land. The biggest difference is going to be in their legs. Manny Pacquiao still has legs. Pacquiao can move around the ring. Right? Adrian Broner, who, let's face it, was running against Mikey Garcia. Didn't want to stand still. Even when Broner is running, he doesn't have the foot speed. Just doesn't. Of Manny Pacquiao. Also, you'll notice the difference in the reflexes. I was watching that Broner fight uh, against Jesse Vargas. Right? Vargas is hitting Broner in the ribcage on demand. On demand. Broner, who used to be defensively blessed, no longer has the reflexes to block those shots or to even move away from the pocket when those shots come. It's just not happening. Right? So, I understand. Some people are out there saying, gee, this is a complicated fight. I know Paulie Malinaji who fought Broner. Malinaji, who's an excellent boxing commentator, has been talking about Broner's skills. Again, let me just say the obvious. Paulie Malinaji fought Broner several years ago. I'm just telling you, I know today you have some athletes who have preserved themselves remarkably well and who have been able to age with the sport, right? I know we look at Vladimir Klitschko, who's still viable for the heavyweight title today, right? More than a year into his retirement. We'll talk about him in another video. I didn't like the way boxing treated him recently. But you look at a Vladimir Klitschko, you look at an Evander Holyfield, another guy, guys who are always in shape, who never stray too far from the gym, who you never see having a problem make weight. I understand I'm talking about heavyweights here who don't have to worry about the scales, but you know there are certain fighters out there who are always in shape. You never worry about the guy, right? Missing weight, not taking a fight seriously, thinking that he can fight contenders and take fights off, right? I like guys too who are able to stay out of legal trouble because let's face it, for all of us, athletes and not athletes, you can only be in one place at one time. So if you're in court dealing with claims and lawsuits, right, you're not in the gym. If you're meeting with your lawyer to talk about your latest legal problem, you're not meeting with your trainer figuring out fight strategy. Right? Broner, let's just say, has had his share of issues outside of the ring, right? So you're talking about a guy who, to me, his reflexes have slowed. He has lost some recent fights. Loses the Mikey Garcia fight. I know they call that Jesse Vargas fight a draw. I didn't. I don't consider that fight a draw. I don't know how anyone could look at the body shots in that fight and think that fight was a draw. Let's just say Broner has had some rough fights. Adrian Granados. You remember that fight? That fight hung in the balance until late. That fight had issues. Also, what I want people to do, too, is to look at the weight history of that fight. That was supposed to be fought at a certain weight class. Then, of course, at the last minute, they tell Adrian Granados, hey, we're changing the weight class on you. In other words, Broner's been so disorganized that you have a Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. type situation here. I'm just telling you, once a fighter hits this stage of their career, they're not viable against a Manny Pacquiao.
even when Manny Pacquiao is 40 years old, right? I don't think Broner is going to be able to keep up with Pacquiao just in terms of movement. You want to see fast hands, folks. I know in the abstract, if you didn't know Manny Pacquiao, when you heard 40-year-old guy, you'd say, oh, man, 40? He's fighting at Welter? You'd say, oh, come on. How fast are his hands, really? Folks, this guy has some of the fastest hands, I'm sure, Many of the hardcore boxing viewers who have watched the sport for years who are watching this video right now have ever seen, right? Pacquiao fought Lucas Matisse. Folks, it was as if they were in two different time frames, right? Matisse just could not handle the suddenness of Manny Pacquiao's left hand. Just couldn't handle it at all. So forgive me here, but I don't see how Broner is going to beat Pacquiao either boxing or with power shots. Broner won't be able to find Pacquiao. Let me say too, I understand counterpunchers have a fantasy going where they think they're the next Juan Manuel Marquez, right? They say, hey, I saw Pacquiao get knocked out cold. Right? I can... I can set that up myself, right? Folks, when's the last time Adrian Broner got a knock out like that? If he hasn't been getting knockouts like that against Adrian Granados, how's he going to do that against Manny Pacquiao? Let me ask you two. The Pacquiao-Jesse Vargas fight. Pacquiao won the fight. Didn't Pacquiao look a little bit too fast for Jesse Vargas? Right? Folks, the, the Adrian Broner-Jesse Vargas fight was do or die. Right? I, I, personally, I didn't think that fight was hard to score. If you believe Broner did enough to get the draw in that fight, at least admit Broner needed some of the later rounds in that fight. <laughs> in other words, Broder struggled to get a draw against a guy who Pacquiao beat. Right? That's a common opponent. So I believe Adrian Broder now is a ghost. We remember younger Broner when he had the reflexes, when he wasn't struggling to make weight when he wasn't in court every other day. Why, we remember the Broner from before. Marcus Maidana. Don't fall in love with fighters who no longer exist. Right? Broner today, I have to tell you, I thought he had a better shot against Mikey Garcia than he did. I saw the early part of that fight and I thought, oh my God, what, what's Broner trying to do? I thought maybe this is one of those fluke type deals where Broner starts on his back foot because later he wants to surprise his opponent on his front foot. As if Mikey Garcia, future Hall of Famer, hasn't seen it all already. But I thought, okay, maybe this is a strategy thing. Then you notice Broner still lack confidence in the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round, the seventh round. By the time you got to the later rounds of that fight, you realize, wow, you know, Broner's never, never gonna try to win this fight. He's never gonna draw a line in the sand and say, okay, look, it's do or die. I've gotta, I've gotta land something here. I've gotta go for a KO here. To beat this man never happened folks I'm not sure if it's gonna happen here with Manny Pacquiao let's talk about actual odds let's talk about as they're listed right now I've noticed the line has moved right obviously I've liked Pacquiao for a while I have the other video here online to win the fight right now the odds have shifted toward Pacquiao Pacquiao is a minus 300 
What they're telling you is that if they fought four times, Vegas believes that Manny Pacquiao wins three of the four. Right? The bet I like is to take Manny Pacquiao to win. Mixed with, it's not a hedge, right? It's not a pure hedge. Mixed with the under 10 and a half rounds. 10 and a half rounds at a plus 210. Folks, I think Pacquiao has an excellent opportunity here. Excellent opportunity of closing the show on Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner was on the canvas against Marcus Maidana years ago. Right? Pacquiao is a guy who is very hard to hold. He just moves too well. So when you get hurt, you don't have the benefit of reaching out and grabbing the guy, clearing your head, holding the dude, right? No, you don't have that option, right? Pacquiao comes in, bang, bang. He backs back out. You're dazed and confused. He comes back in, bang, bang. The ref's counting over you, right? I just don't think. Broner, at this stage of his career, has the reflexes to deal with the bang-bang. Right? I think the Broner I saw against Jesse Vargas, right, doesn't have the capability, quite frankly, to deal with an episodic fighter like a Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's not going to come set up shop in the pocket. He's going to be outside, dancing around, waiting for you to make a move. And the minute you open up a bit, Pacquiao's going to come inside with bombs. Let me say this too. I know there are people who remember the kind and gentler Manny Pacquiao. Right? A Pacquiao who's beating guys up. Chris Algieri, knocking him down several times, but who then let him linger a bit. The Pacquiao who years ago knocks down Shane Mosley early, then lets him linger a bit. The Pacquiao who laid against Antonio Margarito when Margarito clearly has a closed eye. Coase doesn't want to finish Margarito, right? Folks, there's another Pacquiao. There's the post-Jeff Horn Pacquiao, right? Let's be clear here. He takes out Lucas Matisse. Takes him out. Understand that Jeff Horn fight, there's a moment in that fight where the referee warns Horn that he needs to see something. Manny's coasting late in that fight. It costs him. So this is a Manny Pacquiao who, at this stage, understands that he needs to close shows, right? If he has the upper hand, he can't allow a Jeff Horn or a Lucas Matisse a second life. So here he has an opponent here. And I don't care, you know, fitness isn't the kind of thing where I could, you know, go from years of hitting the buffet table to suddenly deciding I'm going to have a serious training camp and be able to duke it out with a freak athlete. No, come on. That's not the way fitness goes. Let me also say, too, just like with Michael Jordan, I, I don't care if Manny Pacquiao has been spending part of his time pursuing politics, right? This is a freak athlete who's never too far from the gym. He looked great against Lucas Matisse. That was without Freddie Roach. Now he's back with Freddie. I'm guessing he's looking around at 147 and he's seeing paydays left and right. Right? Paydays left and right. You want big fights? All Manny has to do is take on the winner of Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence. All Mikey has to do is take on the winner of Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. All Manny has to do is take on Keith Thurman, who's back. 
right folks you have lucrative fights at 147 pounds and even those fights aren't enough for Manny Manny's calling out Floyd Mayweather he understands Mayweather isn't a remote possibility if he starts getting roughed up by the Adrian Broners of the world right if Manny looks bad against Adrian Broner nobody's gonna want to see him against Floyd right so Manny I believe is here on a mission all he has to do is run the Mikey Garcia film and he has to realize Broner himself doubts his chin let me point out to that we really don't know what happens in sparring we really don't right all I know is Broner was afraid of Mikey Garcia keep in mind Garcia was coming up from 135 Broner was terrified of him terrified also don't get suckered don't get suckered by personalities right Broner's making a lot of faces at Jesse Vargas when they fought I'm just telling you folks look at that fight and look at the body shots Jesse Vargas beats him I don't care what faces the fighters making you got to land punches right I can see you and say okay uh, Broner's a great entertainer but on my scorecard still be giving the round to the guy who landed the body shots Jesse Vargas right so I don't care if Broner steers at Manny if, if if Broner you know puts on a good show if Broner's trying to stick his tongue out at Manny between punches and stuff like that you don't think 40 year old Manny Pacquiao hasn't seen it all you don't think Pacquiao hasn't fought Cotto Margarito Mayweather <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya right think about it Manny has been around so long that he beat Canelo's promoter right great fight one of history's best fights right so Manny has the speed Manny still has the timing Manny's the better athlete he has the far better legs folks this fights a mismatch right I understand you have a lot of people out there who respect Adrian Broner who are talking about Broner's skills and stuff like that you know if Paulie Malignaggi fought Broner last year okay maybe I'd say uh, okay no he fought him too long ago right too long ago for me to think that Broner who's yo-yoing and weight and stuff like that is still the same fighter right you know Showtime putting on a great performance here uh, great promotion etc uh, Manny's still Manny Adrian Broner is no longer Adrian Broner let me also say too that people look at Manny's losses and they read too much into them folks many guys many guys many guys look subpar against Floyd Mayweather that's just reality as Anthony Mundine whether Jeff Horn hits hard right understand Manny has been facing the Mayweathers of the world he's been facing tough opposition right don't assume that everyone can throw a counter like Juan Manuel Marquez <laughs> right understand Marquez is going to end up in the Hall of Fame right Floyd's going to end up in the Hall of Fame let's see Adrian Broner try to catch Manny like that right I don't think it's going to happen I like Manny Pacquiao to win minus 300 I like the under 10 and a half rounds that gives you the first 10 rounds plus half of the 11th and you mean to tell me I get that at a plus 210 so if Manny takes out Broner takes him out in the first 10 and a half rounds 
you win both halves of the bet. If Broner does a one Manuel Marquez, let's say lightning strikes and catches Manny on the way in, and that's Broner's only chance in this fight because he's not going to outbox Manny Pacquiao, right? He doesn't have the ring presence of Manny Pacquiao. He certainly doesn't have the hand speed or the foot speed, right? If Broner catches Manny, like Juan Manuel Marquez did in the first 10 and a half rounds, you win on the hedge. That's how I'm playing the fight. If I had one bet to make, it would be on Manny Pacquiao to win. I don't consider this fight to be close. I know someone close to Mayweather said that this was a 50-50 fight. <laughs> That's not how I see it. Let me hear from you. Tell me how you see it. Tell me how you're playing this. Tell me the odds you got in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.